All right, hello. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you happen to be. So today's lesson, we're actually doing a review. We're doing the mid-chapter checkpoint for chapter two. We're on pages 75 and 76 of your textbook. Okay. And the first section of our review is vocabulary. And you need to know these three terms, okay? Distributive property, factor, and partial products. Now, to find the product of a two-digit number and a one-digit number, you can multiply the tens, multiply the ones, and find the sum of each. Well, let's think about this. Factor is, doesn't have anything to do with adding. That, that would be multiplying. So it's not factor. And this isn't, that doesn't express the distributive property. So it must be partial products. Okay, you can multiply two-digit number, let's say 24, and a one-digit number, such as 8, and we can multiply the tens, multiply the ones. So 8 times two tens would be 160, plus 8 times four ones, 32. So yeah, we're, these here are our partial products. Okay, so we're going to add those up to get the, the product for that number. Okay, the blank states that multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products. So if we were taking this 24 again, so it's basically saying 8 times 20 plus 8 times 4. And so what property are we talking about here? The distributive property. States that multiplying a sum, let me back up, sorry, eight times 20 plus four, okay? So multiplying a sum, that's what this is, eight times the sum of 20 plus four is the same as multiplying each add end by the number and then adding the products. So we multiply the, the eight by 20 and we'd also multiply the eight by the other add end four. And then we would add up the products of those two problems, 192. So that's the distributive property for this one. That's what does, how the distributive property works. All right, number three, write a comparison sentence. So we have five times nine equals 45, but we have to put it in terms of words or a comparison. So we know that five, times as many as nine. Remember, we or recall we talked about the equal being is. We can use the word is for that, 45. Number four, this time it says 24 is. 24 is six times as many as Number five, again, 54 is six times as many as nine. This time we're going left to right again, eight times as many as six is 48. Eight times as many as six is 48. Eight times as many as six is 48. All right, number seven, estimate and then record the product. So 75 is close to 80. So 80 times five. So we 
we've been practicing multiplying the basic math fact. So 8 times 5 is 40. And then we've been placing the zero from the tens, the hundreds. So we're counting how many zeros are in the number that, uh, in the factor that we multiply by. And so there's one zero in eight. So I'm expecting an answer that's close to 400. All right, so first one we're going to do is five times the tens. Okay, remember we broke up the 75. That's 70 and five. And we're multiplying each of those by five. So 5 times 70, so multiply the 10 first, we get 350. Multiply the 1s, 5 times 5, 25. Add those together, we get 375. Okay? Number 8. So on number 8, 12 times 6, I'm going to turn, turn this 12 into 10. It's closer to 10 than it is to 20. And 10 times 6, that's actually just a basic math fact, 60. Okay, so now let's break up the 12 times 6 as 10, sorry, 10 and 2. And we're multiplying each of those by 6. So let's start with the 10s. 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 2 is 12. So 72. 28. Uh, number 9. 28 is close to 30 times 3. Basic math fact, 3 times 3 is 9. Put the 0 from the 3 tens. Okay, now let's solve that on our paper. So we have 28 times 3. So I'm going to split up the 28. That's 20 plus 8, and then it's times 3. So 3 times 20 is 60, and 3 times 8 is 24. And so add those together by place value, 4, and 6 tens and 2 tens is 8 tens, 84. And number 10, so 43. 43 is close to 40, so we'll do 40 times 6, and in this case, the basic math fact is 6 times 4, so 24, and we need to put the 0, 1 0 at the end because we're multiplying by 10s. So 240 is what our estimate is. Our actual answer, rewrite the problem neatly. Okay, this is number 10. We've been practicing drawing a model to show how we broke it up. And we're multiplying the 40 plus the 3 by 6. And 6 times 40. 240, so 6 times 40, and then 6 times 3, 18. So we get 258. Okay, and all of our answers are reasonable because they're real close to our estimates. All right, so number 11, record the product and use the expanded form to help. All right, so 5 times 64 is the same as 5 times 60 plus 5 times 4. Five times 64 is the same as saying 5 times 60 
plus 5 times 4. So 5 times 60 is 300. 6 times 5 is 30. Put the 1 0 from the 10. Plus 5 times 4, which is 20. If we combine 300 plus 20, we get 320. Number 12, I'm going to rewrite it this way. Okay. Just so that it looks like the problems we've been practicing. Okay, we're going to put the larger frac factor on top, and we're multiplying by 3. So now we're going to break apart 272 as 200 plus 70 plus 2, and we're multiplying that all by 3. So 3 times 200 is 600. 3 times 70 is 210. And 3 times 2 is 6. Add those all together. We get 6, 1, 8, 816 for our answer. Let's go on to page 76. Number 13. There are 6 times as many dogs as cats. If the total number of dogs and cats is 21, how many dogs are there? There are six times. Okay, so this is a comparison problem, right? Six times as many dogs as cats. So we're going to start with here and we're going to put, I'm um, sorry, we're going to call those cats. Okay. And then we know that the dogs is six times as many as the cats. And together, they equal 21. So how many parts do we have in this problem? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 times some number, whatever the cats are, equals 21. So 7 times what is 21? 3. So we're saying that there were three cats and there were six times as many dogs. Three times six equals 18. So cats, three, dogs, 18. Okay, does that make sense? Let's check. If we put three in every box, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, so that adds up right. Number 14. The table below shows the number of calories in one cup of different kinds of berries. How many calories are in four cups of blackberries? Four cups of blackberries. So we have our table and it says berry nutrition. We have four different types of berries. And these are the number of calories in one cup of that type of berry. We need blackberries. So we know that our problem is going to be 4 times 62. Every set, every cup of the blackberries has 62 calories. So we can rewrite it as 62 times 4. We can break up 62 as 60 and 2. 60 plus 2 is 62. And multiply them by 4. So 4 times 60 is 240. 4 times 6 is 24. Put the 0 from the 10. 4 times 2 is 8. Now add them together. 8, 4, 2. So 248 calories in four cups. And last, the skating rink rents 200 pairs of skates in a month. How many pairs of skates does the rink rent in four months? Well, they seem to have kind of an easy one for us for the end here. So we have 200 skates per month, and we're renting for four months. 
Okay, four times 200. I'm not sure I need to break this up, do I? 200, 400, 600, 800. 800 skates rented in four months. If we really wanted to break it up, we could. We could rewrite this as four times 200. But when I go to split my my value, I'm just going to have 200. There's there's no other boxes. So four times 200, just 800. Everything else is going to be zeros, right? There's no tens. Four times zero is zero. There aren't any ones. So add that together, we just get 800. Okay, so there's really no reason to go all this. Just you have four sets of 200. Okay, so four times two is eight. Put two zeros on 800. All right, so that's it for our practice for this, for the, our mid-chapter review. We'll take a test on this in class, and then we'll move on to our next lesson. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.